get going. So we're going to start with the employee recognition portion of today's meeting, which I think we might as well just kick it off with the positive fun stuff and recognize some of your very hard work and dedication to our district. We'll start with our years of service recipients. I have three of our coveted, um, I guess brick you might call it to pass out. I know this is such a fun point in in our careers in Clovis Unified to get this. And it's really um, almost like a rite of passage to be able to have one of these on your desk or in your office, in your classroom, um, and just kind of keep track of your dedication. So we will start with um, one of our campus club instructors. Megan Dyer is getting her five-year brick today. Congratulations, Megan. Very cool. And from our preschool program, Happy five year anniversary to Lindsay Cavazos. Congratulations, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And we have our wonderful and amazing speech pathologist, Sarah Sharnick, five years with Clovis Unified School District. That's so great. So if you're new to the district and you haven't seen one of these before, on your five year anniversary, you get one of these beautiful plaques and it has the five year sticker already on it. And we do have some employees who get to add to their brick this year. So beyond the five year, you just get the little sticker to add to it. So celebrating some additional anniversaries, and these are in increments of five years. We have celebrating 10 years with Clovis Unified, Aaron Banuelos. Congratulations, Aaron. I have your 10 year sticker for you. Celebrating 15 years with Clovis Unified School District, Mrs. Julie Terrence. Congratulations, Julie, 15 years. And how perfect to send her away on her last year celebrating 15 years as well, Mrs. Brandy Gunner. Congratulations, Brandy. And rounding it out, finishing off her plaque with 30 years three full decades dedicated to Clovis Unified School District. Congratulations, Janet Weaver, 30 years. Pretty amazing. I will have these um, up in the office if I'm not here or if Laura's here, you can check with her if she has those. Um, if you're around today, sometime next week, we wanna make sure everybody gets those. Congratulations. Um, we will be now making sure we hear directly from our governing board. They created a video that they would like to share with all of you today. So I will play that. Remember, you have control of your own volume on your computer. So if you can't hear something, try it on your computer first and then um, let me know if it's not working. This year, our theme in Clovis Unified is inspiring excellence. Sometimes inspiration comes in the form of a handshake, a high five, or a fist bump at the classroom door. Or cheering from the sidelines of academic, athletics, or performing art events. We never thought inspiring excellence would come in the form of neighborhood parades. Zoom lessons, or warm meals served curbside, or from a school bus with a warm smile and a word of encouragement or what we call distance learning. Through these challenging times, you are living out our theme, inspiring excellence in our students, as well as throughout the community. It's that time of year again to come around and say thank you for all you do to the kids with Clovis Unified, and we appreciate you all so very much. Thank you for being a part of our Clovis Unified team. You inspire excellence. Awesome. So a little message from our board members. I know they've they've said in some of the meetings how much they miss these visits and getting to come on campus and see your faces and talk to you directly and thank you directly. They did um, pass a resolution declaring May 2020 as Employee Appreciation Month. And as you know, during that time when they do come around and visit, there is always a beautiful gift that every single employee in the district receives, over 6,000 employees. This year, we're getting a beautiful beach towel. It's royal blue, which is nice for our school colors with navy blue writing. And of course, it says, be the best you can be in mind, body, and spirit. 
I'm hoping Wild Waters opens up because you know you'll see about 5,000 of the 6,000 out there at Wild Water <laughs> Adventures. Mm -hmm. I always love seeing that. Um, so that's our board gift. You will be able to receive those on Friday when we have our snow cone truck. Hopefully you've seen that flyer go out. There are a couple of different time slots. If your specific position or um, grade level department isn't listed on there, just go ahead and, and figure your office staff and come and join us at 2.30 if that works for you. Again, that's um, just kind of a suggestion so we can keep the flow going, but we'd love to see every single one of our amazing staff members stop by on Friday and have some Lolo's shaved ice as a little thank you and as a, a last day of school celebration. Very bizarre way to end the year, but it should be fun. At this time, we're gonna move into our 2020 spring update. So this is my first time Zooming and sharing a PowerPoint at the same time, so bear with me, fingers crossed for no technical difficulties, but such is life at this point. So we will move into that presentation. All right. So this is, it's been broken up into three separate sections, and then we'll have, um, little pauses in between. So if there are any questions, I'm gonna be showing you some specific documents as well that can be shared if needed. So if there's anything you see in here that you personally want to revisit, or if you would like a copy for yourself, just reach out to me and we can certainly make that happen. Um, the first section is an introduction and a message from our superintendent, Dr. Emer O'Farrell, as well as Norm Anderson, our associate superintendent, of school leadership. Hello, Clovis Unified employees. What a roller coaster year we have had, one in which we have made many decisions that we would never have envisioned when we first came together at general session last August, but decisions that were the right ones for the times in which we are living. Never would any of us have imagined that we would end our school year together but apart, unified, but separated by California's lengthy stay-at-home order. COVID-19 has turned our world on its ear, and many things about our everyday lives have been impacted by efforts to mitigate the spread of this disease. It is for that very reason that we are moving forward with delivering, though in a bit of a different format, this year's spring update, State of the District presentation. Since March, I've been sending you regular updates updates by email and video. And like those messages, the spring update is our effort to keep our employees, the people who are Clothes Unified, informed about issues and decisions facing the district that will have an effect on our employees. Over the next 15 to 20 minutes, you will hear from members of my executive leadership team as we share critical information about our services to students, compensation, finance and staffing, along with a few glimpses into our future. I've also asked your department or site leader to be prepared to answer questions that you might have as a result. I wish that everything we had to share was good news, but as you can imagine, the still unfolding impact of COVID-19 on our state's economy and on the delivery of education will create challenges, some significant. I know that for some of our employees, you are already feeling the impact of lost hours or stipends from the cancellation of student activities. And every employee is feeling the impact of our jump to distant learning and remote work, both professionally and personally. We don't want to hide these truths and consistent with our philosophies of transparency and teamwork. We are sharing some hard facts with you today and we will work together to address our challenges. While you may find some of the information in this year's update discouraging, I want to leave you with another truth, an encouraging one. During a season where many things are unclear, one truth has been evident to me with crystal clarity, and that is the value of our people. You are our most valuable resource. Our people have stepped up during this difficult time. Clovis Unified, you have been simply incredible. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been perfect. But you have shown our kids and our community that your hearts are for them. Next
next year, we are celebrating our 60th year as a unified school district. As you listen to updates from Associate Superintendents Norm Anderson, Barry Jager and Michael Johnston, and Deputy Superintendent Don Ulrich, who will wrap us up, keep in mind that we are 60 years strong because we have leaned into our challenges together as a team. We have held true to our core values like people not programs and a fair break for every kid when making decisions and we will continue to do just that as we face the challenges ahead. Every year we select a theme, a kind of word of the moment about our work. It goes on t-shirts and signs and reminds us of our core purpose as a group. This year, our theme was Inspiring Excellence. I wouldn't have ever thought that Inspiring Excellence would mean zoo meetings with our kids, virtual workouts, hot spots or meals served through car windows, or teacher teams meeting over a weekend, stunned by news that our campuses had been closed, but immediately jumping into action to teach our kids. But this year, that's what it looked like. Our services to students were disrupted this year, but I am proud of our team for not letting the disruption of distance learning stop us from still delivering an education to our students. Inspiring excellence, you absolutely have. One of the areas we like to cover in the spring update is what's new in our services to students. Over the past five years, this has focused a lot on what Clovis Unified is doing for our Local Accountability Plan, or LCAP. Here, we've shared information about our transition teams, rollout of the state's new curriculum standards, and the changes in staffing that result from the addition of programs our community identified through our LCAP process. As you can imagine, the LCAP and staffing plans we were developing in February look very different now than it is in May. And I'm going to quickly recap for you where we are in in these areas of our district. First, as you are aware, California sought and was granted a waiver to skip the state's annual math, English, and science assessments for our students. Not only did that allow us for some flexibility as schools shifted to distance learning, it also means that there will be no state-level student achievement data from the current school year. This impacts how the state will update its data dashboard, consider distinguished school awards, and many other elements of our traditional assessment cycle. It also impacts our classy process, which will be adjusted this year to account for a lack of assessment data. In conjunction with the state's cancellation of its 2020 student assessments this spring, California's Department of Education has also released temporary modifications to the LCAP. Rather than our detailed and lengthy process to gather input from our community and develop updates to our LCAP plan, this year the state has asked for every school district to submit a report of how students have been served during distance learning. This summary is being prepared by our Curriculum Instruction Accountability Department and will be approved by our governing board in June. It will then be followed by a one-year operating plan that will stand in for the full LCAP plan that we usually create. As a result of the one-year modification of LCAP, and in light of the cuts to education funding that Michael Johnson will share in detail in a few minutes, we will not be introducing any new programs or services in the coming year. Instead, just as we've done in the past during tight budget times, we will focus on protecting our core programs and on our existing employees. When we talk about the coming year, I know that for many of our employees, you're anxious about what that will look like. Schools are critical to our normal fabric of our communities, and reopening our campuses and facilities is a vital step to Clovis's and Fresno's recovery. The state's stay-at-home order and restrictions on gathering, you're wondering what school is going to look like in August and whether things like general session and fall sports will happen. Some questions, even some of our largest, don't have answers yet. However, there are a few things I can share about what we're going to do to prepare for the fall. First, we are staying in very close communication with local and state agencies who will have a say in guidelines for our schools. Not only does this allow us to be up to the minute on guidance for reopening as it evolves, it also gives us a voice in decisions being made that impact our schools doing business. Most recently, as of May 7th, we have implemented workplace guidelines and when employees might wear masks and how we are ensuring our workplaces follow healthy practices. A copy of these guidelines were shared with your department or school site leader who can share a copy with you. Some details of what we will be required in schools remain unclear, like how many students can be in a classroom at the same time. But as we learn of the Centers for Disease Control's cleaning protocols, it's clear that standards for deep cleaning, hand and cough hygiene, and monitoring student employee illnesses that were in place before our move to distance learning will likely continue. We had even purchased backpack units that allow our custodians to disinfect a classroom in just a few seconds, which allows us to complete deep cleaning nightly, another recommended best practice. In addition, 
transition, while we are making plans for fall sports, general session, and even our delayed traditional graduation ceremonies, we are also making alternate plans of what these events or activities would look like if the state doesn't relax its ban on large social gatherings. To help families and employees prepare, we will use the following dates to make decisions about some of these big ticket items. June 1st will be our date for announcing any cancellation of late June activities, camps, and programs, ensuring an initial return to work plan for our support employees. June 15th will be the date by which we will make decisions about July activities. Whether or not our postponed graduation ceremonies planned for July 27th and 28th can be held will be decided no later than July 1st. And by July 16th, we will share our return to campus plan for the 2021 school year and determine how we will deliver general session and August camps, clubs, and programs. Summer school is already in the planning phases as well, with students enrolled in distance learning summer school programs. This will be the first time we're delivering summer school for elementary students in this model, but something we're used to with our secondary students. We'll continue to keep you up to date as plans evolve for our return to campus. Great, so you heard um, Mr. Anderson talk about the work that's already underway in terms of making sure our campuses are meeting all of the guidelines that have been sent out by our state and by the Center for Disease Control. You will have noticed the posters that are up on entrances to campus if you've been able to be on campus. Um, that's the one on the right here called Social Distancing Protocols. So what we have moved to is making sure that anytime we're in contact with the public, we're wearing masks and any time that um, materials are being handled or passed back and forth, we're wearing gloves as well. So that will definitely continue. Um, will be very important next week when we have folks on campus for different things like Block C awards, packet pickup, things like that. So we will continue to follow those things that have been outlined by um, those entities. And then of course the plan he talked about you guys have all the same questions that I do. Um, I get texts from friends and family members from Club Unified, from surrounding districts. Everybody is, is dying and just chomping at the bit to know and to have a plan for what August is going to look like. But as, you know, to reiterate what I think Dr. O'Farrell and Norm both said, unfortunately at this time we really just don't know. But as you can see, there's a pretty detailed timeline. So I think um, come July 16th, we'll have some great answers. Many of you have heard me already share that Dr. O'Farrell and Norm Anderson are both on a statewide um, level or a state level, I guess I should say, committee um, that is helping the entire state come up with some guidelines and parameters for opening of schools. And um, we also have a district level committee that's working towards making sense of all that and making sure that it, it fits for what Clovis Unified needs and what we know of our own district. Um, looks like we might have a question. Will we be able to pick up gloves at the mailboxes? Absolutely, we can get some gloves um, out there for you. Thanks for asking that, Becky. We have had um, masks and gloves available for lunch service the past couple of weeks and we'll continue to do that as well. Yep, if you need something, just let me know. So next we are going to hear about staffing, compensation, and budget from Barry Bigger and Michael Johnston. Hello Clovis Unified. I'm here in a building that is a great example of what makes Clovis Unified unique. Our new campus catering facility was built because our food service team has approached our meal service from an entrepreneurial standpoint, focused on creating meals that our kids enjoy and manage its finances carefully. This building, funded out of campus catering's budget, opened its doors this month and will serve a team that has done amazing work. Campus catering, along with our transportation, purchasing, warehouse, and business services teams have been the backbone of our delivery of essential meal service to our students. Just like our teachers who jumped on distance learning, these employees have shown us what dedication looks like. Thank you. Mr. Anderson tracked through some key areas of service to our students and our work to prepare for a return to campuses. And I want to update you on compensation and staffing. No, I'm not animated Steve, but I do want to remind you that employees total compensation packets is made up of a couple of components. This includes your take home pay, which over the past five years has increased 
by more than 11%. Retirement contributions, both those you make as an employee and an increasing amount that the district contributes on your behalf. And then for eligible employees, it also covers your health benefits for you and your dependents. Already this spring, those employees participating in our health plan have completed your open enrollment for next year. When you did, you saw that costs to employees for health benefits didn't go up this year. That was the result of decisions made by your representatives on the Employee Benefits Committee. At the same time, the cost of providing our benefit plan has continued to climb year over year. And while we're able to manage the cost in the current year, the EBC has created a smaller committee of employees who are already diving more deeply into our health plan in search of cost savings and ways we can restructure to manage costs into the future. As has been effective in the past, this group will seek to first reduce costs in the health plan, like renegotiating contracts or narrowing provider networks before turning to possible increases in employee cost sharing to make ends meet. Throughout the year, we'll keep employees updated on their work. Benefits, like the district's required contributions to STRS and PERS, our employees' retirement system in California, are becoming more costly. Just when COVID's wrath on the economy is going to result in funding cuts for education, all this might make things feel like we are in uncharted budget territories. But we do have experience, as recently as the Great Recession, in weathering these storms. And as soon as we saw sectors of the economy being shut down, began to take some of the steps we know prove effective in holding to our core values, protecting our employees, and reducing our budget. For example, as a result of a hiring slowdown, we have committed to not backfilling all positions that open through attrition. Open positions like the Director of Sports and Recreation, Director of Digital and Multimedia, Budget and Finance Manager, and an HR Specialist, along with some teachers on special assignment will not be backfilled. We are examining every open position carefully before it is approved and posted. Another way that we immediately shifted gears was in the work of our Employee Compensation Committee. Earlier in May, you saw an update from our ECC members about how their work had been impacted by the change in California's economy. Though in early March, employees on ECC were strategizing how to find increases in compensation, studying our longevity structure and reviewing stipends. That work was put on hold in late April. In the coming months, the ECC will continue to meet, but will shift their work to align with our budget reduction efforts that Associate Superintendent Michael Johnson will speak to next. You've heard throughout this presentation that in Clovis Unified, we put a priority on our people because we are a school district that is only as good as our people. How we serve our students relies on our people, how we manage total compensation structure, programs, and meet the needs of our community relies on our people. Over the past few months, I've been reminded all over again that we are a district of doers. We look for solutions, not excuses. Every one of our employee groups has applied that attitude and identifying solutions to create distance learning in Clovis Unified. And I know that the fighting spirit, Doc Buchanan, is still alive and well in Clovis Unified. As we hear more about the state's budget and the impact of California's reaction to COVID-19 has had on our economy, we know we are going to need that fighting can-do spirit across the district. We've covered a lot of ground already in this year's spring update, and though the financial picture for California's public schools is complex, I'm going to hit on some highlights that our employees need to be aware of as we prepare for the next year. For those of you who were with us during the Great Recession, this may sound familiar. As you can imagine, the impact of delaying the filing of tax returns and when tax payments are due, along with shutting down many sectors of our economy, is significant and not yet fully known. What we do know is that the state's Department of Finance has told school districts to prepare for huge budget reductions. Mid-year cuts, large budget reductions in funding, and delaying cash payments to school districts were all things that we experienced in the years of the last recession. Because of our prior experience, we are taking steps now to prepare for much of the same in the coming years. As you heard Barry share, we have already moved to implementing a hiring slowdown, just short of a hiring 
freeze. We are carefully examining any and all open positions before it gets filled. This will require us to redistribute responsibilities in some departments and may mean we have to stop some work underway in others. Since unification, Clovis Unified has never used layoffs to fix budget shortfalls and we don't intend to do so now. We have moved quickly to identifying areas in our operating budget that could be cut without immediate impact on classroom instruction. Working over the spring, our business, school leadership, and human resources teams identified over $12 million that will be taken out of our proposed budget for the coming year. The $12 million in cuts came from areas like expanding the times between technology refreshes for students and staff, leaving open positions unfilled, trimming instructional supplies and resources, and other operating expenses. These cuts will again allow us to start preparing for reductions in the education funding as the state's revenues shrink. But this will be just the beginning of the needed reductions should the state's predictions of even larger cuts to education funding become a reality in the 2021 fiscal year. Turning again to practices that we know work, we will be bringing together the members of every employee group, community members, and our administration to study the budget. This collaborative effort will help us make thoughtful decisions in an effort to keep the impact of budget reductions as reasonable as we can. One other area to keep in mind as we move forward in the coming months is the formulas used by the state and federal government to distribute aid to schools. Like the Federal CARES Act are often formulas that don't favor school districts like ours. You've heard us say many times that Clovis Unified is funded at much lower levels than our neighboring districts and are again seeing these differences in the way assistant funds are being distributed. The first round of CARES Act funding to schools provided Clovis Unified with $132 per pupil while giving a neighboring school district $612 per pupil. That is a significant difference in the dollars of funding that we get in support of these programs. This is a battle we are fighting through our advocacy efforts and in true Clovis fashion, we aren't going to sit on the sidelines without trying to convince the legislature that all students have been impacted by COVID-19 and all districts should receive equitable funding to aid their response. It's a lot to absorb, and we recognize that the budget situation makes all the other changes we may face ahead harder to swallow. That's why we felt it was important to give you some details of what is unfolding in California's budget now. I said at the start that we were a team of doers, and this is a challenge that we will best face with cooperative, can-do attitudes. We are better together. So what you heard them refer a little bit to is the big gray box. So that's what, what completes our total compensation. It's a combination of salary, retirement, and benefits. Um, over the past five years, he said 11.5% increase in that. So we've, we've definitely seen the benefit. Um, right now, I know many of you have questions and maybe I've heard rumors, or like he said, if you remember back to that recession, um, you did experience pay cuts. We did have furlough days. We've kind of walked through that before many of us, but right now um, the efforts around compensation and staffing are working together to make reductions that re don't require layoffs and don't unless we all agree together to reduce employee salary. So again, that is not a decision that has been made. And again, um, you may have heard the governor talk about a 10% pay cut for all government employees. I know I heard that and um, that, that caught my attention. That is not the case for Clovis Unified. So they definitely want you to feel reassured that while the government, or the governor, I, I apologize, did make that statement about 10% for state employees, that does not include Clovis Unified. Is there any, any questions about that information? You can, can shoot those over in the chat if you need to. Um, next, you're going to hear from Deputy Superintendent Don Ulrich, and he's going to talk about business as usual that has not been usual. So we're, we'll hear a message from him and some of the ongoing work of the district now and what we can expect in the future. 
Hello, Clovis Unified. It's really so great to be talking with you today. You know, business as usual has not been usual this spring, even as we focused much of the spring update to this point on how this COVID-19 has impacted the normal business of Clovis Unified. I wanted to take a few minutes to share some of the business that continues in spite of the distractions of COVID-19. You know, it's so important that we maintain our focus on our kids and the work our teachers do. That is the core business we never lose sight of in Clovis Unified. It was just a couple months ago, although it seems like ages ago, back in March, Clovis Unified had a bond measure on the ballot. That bond measure was needed to be able to build a new high school complex and house our growing enrollment. It was needed to keep our school facilities in the good repair that they are today and it didn't pass. That's happened before, but sure not very often in Clovis Unified. And that was the big news of the day prior to March 13th. And as we look into the future, it will continue to have a great impact on our district. So what happens now without a bond measure? That's a huge question and it's a huge challenge. We've done some deep analysis of why our constituents voted the way they did in March and will greatly depend on that information to determine our next steps. It's not a question of the need. The need is there to maintain the foundation of our outstanding facilities our community has come to expect. So plan A would be to place a bond measure on the ballot and give our community another chance, another chance to support the building of a new educational center and maintain our school facilities. Plan B, if we didn't pass a bond measure, we would be developing a student enrollment plan that would shift boundaries from the Clovis East area all the way across our district to the Clovis West area in order to find room for our students. The board is expected to decide in July whether or not they will place the bond measure back on the ballot and we will keep our employee community informed as they move forward on this decision. Speaking of growing enrollment, existing growth in the Clovis East area had already driven plans for a new school and Janet Young Elementary, which is right here behind me as you can see by this beautiful hallway, is scheduled to open this fall. Principal Casey Gibson and her staff are preparing to welcome our young Jets to the Clovis Unified family this August. I know that this beautiful campus will be home to another outstanding educational team that exemplifies our core values and strategic plan that aims to maximize achievement for all students, operate with efficiency and effectiveness, and hire, develop, sustain, and value a high quality and diverse workforce. Our strategic plan and its mission, vision, goals, and aims that keep us focused and are at the forefront of our decision making. You know, that's true all of the time in Clovis Unified, but there's not a more important time to maintain focus as when we are faced with unheard of challenges like we've had to navigate this spring. Though we found ourselves having to make decisions about things we could never have anticipated, like closing our doors to our campuses, those decisions became clearer when you have foundational and inspiring core values to guide you. And that's what our strategic plan and our core values gives us. Over the past six months, we've been in the process of updating our 2016 to 2019 strategic plan. And just this month, the board approved our 2023 plan to maintain our vision, mission, aims, and core values with a few minor adjustments and updates to some of the actions and indicators that we use to measure how well we are executing that plan. What didn't change is our three aims, our vision and our mission. As part of the spring update, your site or department leader has an infographic that outlines what's new in our strategic plan. And I encourage you to take a close Let's look at it. This coming year, we're going to celebrate Clovis Unified's 60th anniversary. That's our diamond anniversary. And our theme this year, that year, will be clarity, quality, commitment. Clarity for the promise of transparency to our employees and our community, which is so important in building and maintaining trust within our team and our community. I know this, we're in this together, and transparency and trust help our team stay strong. Quality is the second word of our theme, and I don't think this needs any explanation. Doc always said it best when he said, we believe in high standards in Clovis Unified Schools. That's so simple, and it makes us great. Every person in our organization takes pride in doing their best for our kids. The last word of our theme is commitment. 
Our team is committed to our kids, to each other, and as many of my mentors taught me over the years, in Clovis Unified, it's not about doing the easy thing, but about doing the right thing. And you have demonstrated that commitment in incredible ways over the past two months. And I know that you will continue to do so far into our district's future. Clovis Unified, it's a magical, special place, and it's because of people like you. As you have heard from each of us this spring, we are facing challenging times, times that will challenge our courage when we return to our campuses and welcome our students back to our classrooms. Times that will challenge our creativity as we navigate public health guidance for social distancing and challenge our commitment to teamwork as together we solve budget shortfalls. I want to thank you for paying close attention to the information we've shared during this spring update and for being a valuable part of what makes our district the great place that it is. Many of you know that I'm retiring at the end of June this year. And if there is one thing I've learned about Clovis Unified over my 35 years, is that this is a tough, tough and resilient organization. We have overcome many challenges in our history and just a few that I've personally witnessed. And we will continue to overcome the ones ahead because we are an educational team. It's because our 6,000 employees together believe in each other and have a common set of values. We are educators, every one of us. We watch out for each other and we take care of our kids. So hang in there, Clovis Unified. Remember, work together. And that means talking, communicating, sharing our concerns, hearing others' perspectives, finding common ground while we remember our core values, remembering to put our kids and our people first. Those values will overcome any challenge like they have in the past and like you've already shown since March. Clovis Unified, we've got this. These are a couple of infographics that, that highlight a little bit of what Dr. Ulrich had to say in terms of our vision, our mission, the things that make up our core values and help guide our decision making. And then in addition, um, some of the updates that go along with our strategic plan. So those three aims remaining the same as um, Norm Anderson mentioned earlier, not adding really any new, new programs or services for next year, but just kind of highlighting the things that we do to make those three aims move forward um, in the face of adversity at this time. And I can, I will send you these as well as the video for this presentation. And then there will be as well a link for you to provide feedback. So as the district is considering different ways to open the school, different ways to be safe, different things to consider in terms of our budget. They are asking for everyone's feedback. So I will send you that link. It's a Google form that you can fill out. Um, if you could do that by Monday, that would be great. So again, I'll be sending out an, a follow-up email with the link to this video, the documents that have been highlighted. So you have copies of them and the link to provide feedback as well. So unless anybody has any burning questions right now that you think would be helpful for the group, I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Everybody good? Awesome. Okay. I know there was also a lot of information regarding um, benefits, compensation things, um, Pam Cruz is our faculty senate representative and Janet Weaver serves us and even in retirement will continue to serve us on the um, employee benefits committee and the compensation committee. So a lot of the things that they work with are, are on those two committees can be considered kind of confidential. But if you do have really specific questions, oftentimes Pam and Janet are really great go-tos even for me. So as we um, as things come up, we can work with them as well to answer questions. Um, but I think we're gonna, gonna end the meeting for now. It was great to see everybody. We hope to see you next Friday, again, for Shaved Ice. That information has been sent out and I can send it again.